Hi, this is Brendan Cronin. This instructional video covers all of the information you need to know to make your recovery from your PTK as easy and as smooth as possible. Right now, you are probably sitting in the recovery area of the South Bank Day Hospital and probably just want to go home. Unfortunately, you do need to stay for a set period of time as per hospital guidelines. Just lie back and have something to eat to pass the time. Your post-operative drops are really important. You will have three main types of drops. Antibiotics, anti-inflammatory or steroid eye drops, and lubricating artificial tear drops. It's absolutely critical that you use them to ensure a routine recovery. This includes the lubricating drops. Even if you feel that your eye is constantly watering for the first few days, make sure you use your lubricants. Many people incorrectly stop the lubricants when the antibiotic and steroid drops finish. Please keep them going. Everyone gets dry eyes after the procedure. Some people will feel this as a dry, scratchy sensation, but most people notice it as blurred vision that clears up when they blink. Some people will even have excess watering because the tear layers are not in balance. This dryness tends to last 6-12 to 12 weeks. Use the lubricants as instructed to help the dryness to disappear faster. Using these is really important for a good visual recovery. It is important that your eye drops are five minutes apart so that one drop has had time to soak in so that the next drop doesn't wash the first one out. The eye can only hold one drop at a time, so there is no need to worry if you use more than one drop, but there's no advantage in doing so. Sometimes in the first few days when your eye is really uncomfortable, it can be hard to do the drops yourself. If this is the case, get someone else to do them for you and always use the lubricating drops last. You will be given a written version of these instructions. It has a tick box sheet on it to make complying with your eye drop regime easier. If you prefer, there are also apps for your phone that will remind you when your drops are due. Your drops only need to be roughly evenly spaced over normal waking hours. You do not need to wake up to do drops. However, many people use the lubricants overnight in the first few days as their sleep tends to be disturbed anyway. With your post-operative medications, you will also be given a bottle of compounded dilute local anaesthetic drops. These should be very effective at taking the sting and discomfort out of your eye. Use them up to hourly as often as you need to, but only use them for three days after the procedure. Throw them out after 72 hours. These drops should work very quickly. You do not need to wait five minutes after you instill these local anaesthetic drops before you apply the anti-inflammatory and antibiotic eye drops. Everyone gets a sore and painful eye after their PTK. Sometimes the pain won't start for a few hours after the procedure, but it will start. Stay ahead of the curve. Don't wait for your pain to start and then take your pain medications. Take the medications before the pain begins so that the pain never gets too bad. Most patients say that if they are in bed with both of their eyes closed and that they have had their oral analgesia, then they were either reasonably comfortable or mildly uncomfortable, but not in pain. It's when you try and do more than this that you get into trouble. You will normally have a bandage contact lens inserted in your eye at the end of the procedure. These lenses are designed to act like a bandage and smooth over any rough parts on the surface of the eye. If this contact lens falls out, leave it out. If your contact lens is irritating and you're happy to remove it yourself, then feel free to do so. So what can you and can't you do after the procedure? You can shower and wash your hair as you normally would. You can wear your glasses, but your vision will be blurry and the prescription may need updating in a couple of months. You can exercise and return to normal activity as your pain resolves. And you can look at a computer, a phone or a tablet or read a book. But in reality, however, most people don't really want to do any of these things for the first couple of days. So what can't you do after your procedure? No eye makeup for seven days. It can harbor germs and cause infections. No swimming for 14 days or until you're given the all clear at your one week check. Don't wear contact lenses until your Maxidex drops are finished and no driving until your vision is back to normal. So what does a typical recovery look like and when can you return to work? Generally, you are pretty sore for 72 hours. This can be very variable as some people recover remarkably quickly and others more slowly. You won't want to do much during this 72 hour period. Usually by 72 hours, 
Your eye won't be painful, but it will be irritated, scratchy or uncomfortable, but not usually painful. Your vision will still be blurry. By the fourth day, which is usually Monday if you had your procedure on Thursday, most people are back at work, but they still have slightly blurry vision. Obviously, this will depend on your profession, how clean your work environment is, and what your visual requirements are. Remember to continue your drops. Obviously, the speed and extent of your visual recovery are going to be completely determined by the underlying condition that you're actually having lasered. In some patients, we'll be expecting a very fast and full visual recovery, and in some patients with severe diseases such as abnormal corneas or corneal scarring, we'll just be looking for significant improvement in vision over time. The other thing that's determined by the underlying condition that you're having lasered is your need for post-operative sunglasses. You should just assume for almost all laser procedures that you should wear sunglasses quite religiously for about three weeks after the laser procedure and quite regularly for about three months after the procedure. Occasionally these requirements will be significantly less and that's typically for patients who are having the PTK for something called a recurrent corneal erosion. You probably have a very low requirement for sunglasses afterwards. But wearing these sunglasses if they're required reduces the risk of a complication called corneal haze after the procedure, so they are quite important. If you have any questions about this, just ask at your one week consultation. So what are appropriate sunglasses? You will be given a pair in the post-operative area of the South Bank Day Hospital. These certainly fit the bill, but they're not stylish. There are two important things that your sunglasses need. The first is that they must meet the Australian UV400 guidelines. All sunglasses that are sold in Australia are supposed to meet these. Second of all, you really need some side protection in the sunglasses, so not aviators, something with either a thick side arm or else a little bit of a wrap around to them, but they don't have to be uncool. You can still keep it stylish. Your optometrist will normally be able to recommend a very good pair of sunglasses for after your laser surgery. Thankfully, emergencies after eye procedures are extremely rare. If you feel you do have an emergency following the surgery, please use the contact details provided in your post-operative booklet. Small issues are much more common, and these will often happen over the weekend. If you feel you do have a question or a concern, please feel free to send me a text message, even if it's after hours. I find people are more inclined to ask questions or raise concerns if they feel they can just send a text message. I only ask that you include your full name, the procedure that you have had done, and the date that you had the procedure performed. I won't have your contact details in my phone, so this enables me to answer your query more quickly and allows me to look up your medical record if I need to. I hope you recover very rapidly from the procedure and get back to your normal life and normal vision as quickly as you can. It's always nice when the procedure is finished and the discomfort has completely resolved. If you have any ideas on how the process can be improved or any feedback, I'm always happy to hear that. Just drop me a line or send me an email.